change module and um, it can be used for a number of uh, designs or, or uses functions which will take a fairly small amount of energy and convert it into a much higher amperage um, there's a couple configurations that I built that actually will take radiant energy antennas use their energy to output a very high 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 energy um, I should say a very high wattage unfortunately there's a ton of heat exchanged while it's doing this so the application inside of this plastic box is actually no good it gets very hot but I can take a 110 volt main which the plug is right there the extension cord is there this is run off of a 15 amp circuit and it's drawing on this meter approximately 8.6 to 8.8 .8 amps at 115 volts um, how it works is there's bucking coils inside of this box and um, it's a transformer with a bucking coil um, where there's a specific amount of turns around the entire outside of the transformer as well as through the secondary slot on the transformer. It's a little tiny little Radio Shack uh, transformer that I cut the secondary off of. This capacitor right here is a 100 microfarads, uh, 400 volt motor run capacitor and it's got a little blue wire coming off of it. It connects to a ground rod that's just barely punched into the ground. There's the end of it. It's punched in maybe about six or eight inches and uh, of course it's snowy and icy so it's not a very good ground. There is nothing else connected to that and I'm going to go test it with a meter plus in a couple of seconds. 60 plus 60 plus we have a 1500 watt heater right here. 1500 plus that's 2510 plus we have a 40 watt radio shack soldering iron see if you can see that 40 watts yep I'm gonna leave that plugged in as well so we have to add 40 it's 2550 watts now over here we have a battery bank two 12 volt, 7.5 amp hour lead acid batteries with six super capacitors. Uh, those are 100 farad, uh, 2.7 volt capacitors in series, just to add an additional load for charging on these uh, batteries here. They're both, all of it soldered together in parallel. And um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to energize this. That blue wire comes in over here and is run in series. It goes in one side of this capacitor, out the other side, and then down to a side terminal right here uh, on the uh, Pelix device. I'm going to put this lighter so you guys can see it. Um, and we have a voltage and amperage meter right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug this in and we're going to let it heat up and we're going to convert Plug in the outlet strip to here. Okay, we have our light bulbs. We have the heater running. So down here the light is on. Battery charger. Let's plug this in. Right now, that is on the 55 amp setting right here. It's charging the batteries, and our amperage is staying at, it's going down slowly, 9.2. Oh. This is dead accurate too. Um, I had a, a clamp on amp probe on the uh, the leads that are there so let's say 9.2 amps 
no, that was wrong. It's 1,058 watts. That's more like it. So our draw from our circuit is 1,058. Okay. This is what it's supposed to be. 25. We're going to do divided by 115 equals 2550 divided by 115 equals it's supposed to be 22.17 amps. Now let me do that again because before I was coming up with uh, 19 but now 22.17 so let's try it again. That's 2550 divided by 115 volts that's 22.17 amps Okay. So, moral of the story here is this is our input. And this is a theoretical output. But it's not really theoretical because we added the wattage listed on all of the UL listed components to show that it's supposed to be 2550 watts or close to it. Um, 22.17 amps is higher than the feed breaker. This breaker pops all the time. We put on the circuit for some reason in this home um, the washing machine uh, as well as a circuit in our garage here. We, this garage is where I have my computer and it's kind of cold. There's no insulation, no heat in here. So we have a little electric heater. Uh, when the dishwasher, the washer, and the heater are on at the same time pops the 15 amp circuit. So use utilization of this circuit is going to eliminate that from happening. Only problem I had is with this little guy. Now it's at uh, showing 120 volt input. This uh, Pelix device gets pretty warm inside uh, it's probably somewhere around 110 115 degrees right now and you could see a little sign of expansion on the plastic so we're gonna have to install this into a steel box and uh, put a fan on the top of the coils and a fan on the bottom of the coils or we're gonna have to immerse the uh, transformer into an in oil and um, put fins on the outside with a fan on the fins would probably be the best way to do it but um, okay we're back over here and uh, running the unit again I just missed one test we're gonna go ahead and uh, we're gonna test the temperature of the unit we're about 150 degrees one between 137 and 160 so I'm gonna just call it 150 it's a little bit high but um, like I said the unit seems to be extremely Success and successfully functioning to uh, provide over unity at uh, 9.4 amps, 0.2 amps higher than before. Every time we turn it on, it, it uh, gives a different amperage. We had 8.9 earlier, 9.2, then 9.4, but um, the output is strong, very strong, and um, everything is still operational here, still plugged in. There's no other wiring. I'm going to go ahead and unplug it because it gets too hot. I don't want it to get ruined. Yeah. <clears throat> and show underneath of the outlet strip. There's no other wiring. Okay, let's go on a broader picture here. The only wire that is external of this. Okay, here, let's back up. Okay, we had the plug plugged in. Everything is contained in this area. All right, now we're going to go to the back of the heater to show you the amperage this is supposed to have, the bottom, or the wattage. Okay, 15, 
1500 watts 120 volts so okay the top of the light bulb 60 watt 60 watt let's see where this is printed oh it's on the front the So it's 11 and a half maximum and 10 and a half, I don't know, it says 120, 2.2 amp max continuous, 10.5 amp max intermittent output 12 volt DC, 55 amp intermittent. So that's uh, 10.5 amps max is 12 13, 1400 watts. So um, that would be, say, instantaneous would be, say, 1200 plus 1500. That's 2700 alone. Plus 2820. Uh, makes the solder around 2860 watts. So and again our input is drawing a thousand fifty eight instead of the twenty eight hundred max or twenty five fifty five took one and daisy chained one to the next to the next to the next and made them bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger it would pass off the uh the heavy load from one to the next to the next to the next you know you have say i have 10 amps feeding this one the next one would be capable of uh, 20 amps on, or uh, yeah, the input would have a capability of 20 amps without popping the breaker because we got 15 amp input, and then the output of that one would be 40 amps. Next one would be 40 amp capability on the input and 80 amps on the output. So the more you make, the more amperage you can get. When you put this capacitor in line and you have a large enough uh, conductor, I'm seeing capability of, of 200 amps on a 15 amp input that's a, a considerable amount but the common throughout the circuit daisy chains in and out in and out in and out in and out so uh, the hot leg is actually tied into the bucking coils comes in goes to the bucking coil and uh, uh, from the bucking coil that hot leg comes back out so it's basically there's a short circuit in here um, from with primary coil to secondary coil and um, it gets pretty hot I've had I have another unit that I made downstairs that uh, that uh, secondary coil is uh, at our RMS load on it is 290 amps so that shows you it's a circuits capability is the same thing as what that bucking coil loop ends up ends up uh, getting wire connects to the blue wire that goes all the way across the garage into the ground rod. That's 0.2 volts between 0.2 to 0.3 between the ground and the outlet air and the capacitor. This side of the capacitor, same thing, 0.2 right. to 0.3 volts. Connected here, same thing, 0.2 to 0.3 volts. Now we're going to go outside Now, keep in mind we're on AC voltage, so I'm going to have to change that to DC, too. Ah. Okay, so we got a connection here. Let's put it on the meter. Okay. snow shows point let me get this off here almost one volt but still certainly not enough to okay that is in the ground 0.4 volts we'll do it again over here okay 
0.4 to 0.3 volts, just a touch higher than it was before. And that could just be some stray voltage that this rod is picking up because this is sticking out of the ground like this. So that proves that we don't have. Now we're going to put it on DC to show you guys the same thing. Oh, there it is. Here's the probe. I'm going to stick it in the ground right next to the meter. I'm at 0.2 volts. Over here, 0.3 volts, 0.2 it's stuck in over here so that proves that there's no voltage coming out of that ground rod. 